In this video, I'm going to do an unboxing of the Netgear GTV100 Neo TV Prime Google TV. So let's get to it. Now, this is one of the lesser known Google TV devices out there. At the time of filming this video, you can pick one up from Amazon.com for $99.99, basically $100. I got this one slightly used, or hopefully lightly used, from eBay for $59.49. And this will be the fourth Google TV device I've ever owned. The first one I owned was the Sony Blu-ray player with Google TV. I got that one on day one. Then I moved on to the Logitech Review with Google TV. And the last Google TV device I owned before this was the Vizio CoStar. Now, if you click on the link at the end of this video, you can check out all the Google TV devices I've ever owned. Now, again, the eBay listing said that this thing was only used a couple of times. It was lightly used. Let's hope that's the case. So let me grab my trusty cutter here, and let's get this thing open. All right. Here is the box itself, a box within a box. Now, this isn't the first Netgear Neo TV device that I've owned, but it is the first one that's Android-powered. It's the first Google TV device. Netgear puts out several other boxes, similar to Roku devices, where you can stream Netflix and, and things like that. But this one is full-fledged Google TV. And I don't believe it's skinned like the Vizio CoStar version is. But let's take a quick tour around the box here. Netgear branding here, Neo TV Prime with Google TV. Endless entertainment in one place, live TV, streaming, web, and apps. Now, if you don't know about Google TV, it actually has an HDMI pass-through like the Xbox One has. And what that means is that you can actually plug your cable box into this device and then take an HDMI cord, another HDMI cord, and plug this device into your TV. And depending on what cable operator you have, you can actually control your cable box with the Google TV. As with all Google TV devices, you have access to the Google Play Store, and then you have some other options down here. Surfing the web is another thing of note. On the side here, you get a little bit of a taste of what this thing looks like. Looks like any of the other Netgear Neo TV devices, just a little rectangle there. And this is the remote. Now the difference is this remote has a full QWERTY keyboard on it, but we'll get into that when we actually look at the device itself. Uh, as I said, you have Google Chrome on here so you can surf the internet. And then one of the other things that's good about Google TV is that you can do a search and it will bring up different options where you can find whatever you searched for. So in other words, if you're searching for TV, movies, and whatnot, you can enter in the name of the movie you want to watch or the TV show you want to watch, and it will pick up from different sources where you're going to be able to see that. So let's open this thing up. Okay, there's a seal on this side. And, okay. Let's open it up from here. And let's see what's on the inside here. First thing you have is some documentation. Getting started guide. Then you have the remote here. We'll get into that in a second. You have the box here. And actually, this is a little bit bigger than your regular Netgear Neo TV devices. Normally, a Netgear Neo TV device is square. This is a little more rectangular, and it's not as thick as this is. I don't actually have any Netgear Neo TV devices anymore. Generally, if I don't use a device, I turn around and sell it on eBay. So I can't actually show you something to compare to this. But uh, trust me, I have seen them and used them enough to tell you that this is just slightly bigger. It's not a large, as you can see, it's not a large device. But it is thicker and wider than a regular Neo TV device. Let's put that, put that to the side and see what else is in the box here. You have your power cord right here. And this is an IR blaster in case you need it. And that's because a Google TV device can actually be used to control other components in your house or in your entertainment center. So basically you can use this device to control a receiver. You can use it again to control your cable box all through here. 
So let's take a closer look at the device itself. It looks to be in okay condition. You know, it has a glossy plastic finish and those are very easy to scuff up. So as you can see, there is some scratching on there. And you can also see my ceiling fan there. So I'll try not to reflect that too much. But you do have your Netgear branding embossed into the cover here. I really don't care if it has a couple scratches on it here and there because this box is going to be in my entertainment center and I'm really not going to see it. The front of it, some dust on there, you have your Neo TV branding, and then this is where your IR receiver should be on the box. On the right hand side you actually have a USB port here where you can actually plug an external drive in, whether it's a flash drive or a hard drive. I believe you can use a hard drive with this. I know you can definitely use uh, an external flash drive on it. And that way you can pull media off of whatever drive you do have and play it on this device. On the left hand side here there's nothing. And on the back you have your IR blaster port here, your HDMI pass through, your in and out, and then you have an Ethernet jack here. This does have wireless incorporated into it. I think it's 802.11 B, G, and N. And then of course you have your power port here. On the bottom you have two rubberized feet and then you have your reset button in here and then you have all the important serial number and all that information under my thumb there. So here's the remote control on it and it's actually thinner than the CoStar remote control. Let me put that to the side so you can actually see the white background there or at least the off-white background. It's thinner than the Vizio CoStar remote control. The Logitech Reviews controller is actually a keyboard, almost a full-size keyboard. And then the Sony Blu-ray player with Google TV, that one actually looks like a game controller. So, so far I haven't obviously used this remote, but so far I actually like this remote the best out of all of them. Uh, like I said, it's not thick like the CoStar, so it fits nice in the hand. On the front of the remote, you see that you have some controls up here. You have your power button here. You have a home button over there. You have a indicator light here. You have, I believe, is probably a touch panel here where you can move a cursor around the screen. You also have some corners of that. So, as you can see, you can press this down and you have four corners which are of different colors there and that will probably allow you to do certain things on the screen and as you can see there there's some arrows there too so you can press on those to control whatever you see on the screen. So, so far so good. I like that. You have some buttons here which are glossy. You have a back button. You have a menu button. You have a search button. You have a picture in picture button. You have a guide button and a live TV button. Down here you have some volume controls. You have channel controls, you have an info button, a mute button, and a minus button. Then you have some play controls here, rewind, pause, play, and fast forward. And then you have some dedicated buttons down here, which allow you just to jump to certain apps. You have a Netflix button, you have an Amazon button, a YouTube button, a My Media button, a Crackle button, and an HBO Go button. And then down here you have your Netgear branding. And it's all pretty much a matte black plastic except for this band around the center here. And as you can see on the back, you have your full QWERTY keyboard. Now I do not believe that this is in any way backlit, but um, in my future videos when I do a review on this device and a first time walkthrough, I'll let you know if that's the case. So you have your full QWERTY keyboard here. Seems like it will be easy to type on. The buttons have a nice click to them. The buttons are all rubberized. You can see that it has sort of a glossy black background there. And uh, this has to open some way so that you can put the batteries in there. But um, I don't know how you do that at this time. Okay, I took a look at the instructions and it's actually pretty unique how you get to the batteries on here. You can see these uh, arrows on either side of the QWERTY keyboard and you just pull this out and it exposes the battery. If I can get this side open as well. There we go. It exposes the batteries which are AAA on either side of the QWERTY keyboard and as you can see on this end it just kind of pulls out like that. So that's a very unique way to access the batteries. 
Now the QWERTY keyboard also has a lock function here. It's actually a lock button. You press it down and you see the light engage there and that shows you that the keyboard is locked. So you're not going to mistakenly press anything back there while it's locked. Again, you can unlock it just by pressing the button again. You also have a function button on this side where if you hold down that function button, which is in red, you can use all of the red controls on the buttons as well. So you can actually have play controls and whatnot on this side if you don't want to use this side. Now this minus button down here is actually part of dragging and dropping. So if you have an item that you want to drag and drop from one area of the screen to the other, you hold down the minus button and then you move it on the touchpad up here. Now this is a Bluetooth remote and you actually have to pair it with the device. And in order to do that, you hold down both the forward and the backward keys on the play controls, and that should pair it with the device. But we'll actually check that out when we actually set it up. So as you can see on the sides of this remote, it's pretty much, you have uh, curved edges on it on all the sides, so it does fit comfortably in your hand. So that's going to do it for this video. Join me in my next video when I actually fire up this device for the very first time and we'll go through the setup process of this Google TV device. So as always, if you like what you see, please subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. And if you want to help out this channel, give me a thumbs up or favorite this video. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.